Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. This is a ram pump. An off-grid water pump needs no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. The concept is water comes through a drive pipe from a creek, closes the waste valve, which sends pressure into here, builds pressure here, and sends water up here on a ratio of about one to seven. So for every foot falling in, you get an additional seven feet out. Pretty cool stuff. In this video, I want to talk about the eight most common things that will stop this pump from working. So let's go ahead and start from the drive pipe end and we'll work our way to the delivery. So let's get into it. Number one, if you put a screen over the intake of your drive pipe, you need to make sure that it cones out or has enough surface area to allow enough water into the pump. If the pump doesn't have enough water to cycle, then it's going to keep the valve open and water is just going to trickle out and it won't ever have enough force to close that valve. Especially if you just place a screen directly over the pipe and a leaf or debris gets caught up against that, it's not gonna have enough water going into the pump. So I recommend that you either cone out that screen or better yet, use an actual intake with plenty of surface area. Even if leaves and debris get stuck to that, you've still got plenty of water going into your pump. Number two, your creek has to have enough flow rate to keep the pump going. If you don't have enough flow, an air bubble is going to get pulled into your drive pipe. And that's gonna stop the pump. The reason for this is the ram pump is looking for the first available open to air water source. So if a bubble is in that pipe, the pressure wave is gonna find that bubble, turn around at that point and head back down to the pump, never reaching the full potential of the head pressure from the source. And whenever that pressure wave turns back around, it pulls that bubble further and further down the pipe until eventually it hits the waste valve and the pump stops. So you just have to make sure you have enough water in your creek to support the size ram pump that you're trying to run. The inch and a quarter, the big one, needs eight gallons a minute to operate. The one inch needs about six gallons a minute. Three quarter inch needs about four gallons and the half inch needs right at two gallons a minute to operate. Now there are some things you can adjust to use less water, but that's what I tell people. So you have to have at least that much water in your creek to keep the pump going. Number three, drive pipe length. If the pipe is too short, the pump is trying to cycle too fast and oftentimes stops. If the pipe is too long, the pressure wave has to travel too far and the pump often stops. So for instance, with the bigger pumps like the inch and a quarter, if you go past 100 feet, that pressure wave is gonna send back out to the source and by the time it gets back, it's kind of lost its uh, potential and pressure. Or there are secondary waves that are interfering in that pipe. So make sure you have a drive pipe that is within 25 and 100 feet. If you have to go further than that, look into the stand pipe. I'll have a link to that down below. Number four, if your drive pipe is mismatched from your waste valve or the pump size, it's not gonna work right. So let's say you've got a one inch ram pump and you're trying to operate this thing with a two inch drive pipe. What's gonna happen is that valve is going to cycle really quick because it's trying to hit that big column of water and turn back around immediately. And so your efficiency is gonna to be totally gone and oftentimes the valve will stay closed. If you're trying to run a one inch ram pump off, let's say a three quarter inch drive pipe, there's not gonna be enough flow. So that valve, the waste valve, is gonna hang open all the time and water is just kind of flowing out of there, never closing the valve. So make sure you use the same size drive pipe as the ram pump. Number five, the ram pump needs right at two and a half feet minimum input head pressure or water drop to keep it operating. I recommend at least three feet. You'll have no problems running the pump with that much drop. But if you're trying to run a ram pump on two feet of head pressure, it's likely going to stop and be a disappointment. So keep that in mind, a minimum of two and a half, preferably three up to about 20 feet of drop. Number six, debris in the pump. So if you don't put a screen over your source drive pipe and a rock or a leaf or a stick comes floating down that drive pipe, it can get stuck halfway in this waste valve and hold it slightly closed, slightly open. Water will be splashing everywhere and the pump won't cycle. Even worse is if something gets into the secondary valve and uh, just gets stuck between the rubber gasket that's in here. Uh, this will still cycle a couple of times, but uh, because the back pressure isn't being held, 
it won't allow this to cycle. So um, debris in the ram pump is a bad thing. Keeping a screen over the initial source is good, and I like to use a secondary bucket that acts kind of as a silt catchment to help further eliminate debris from getting into the pump. Number seven, and this one is a big one, back pressure loss. Let's say you've got your ram pump in the creek with about four or five feet of head pressure feeding it. The valve is cycling, no problem. You can tell water is built up pressure in the tank, but as soon as you go to open up your delivery side, either water gushes out or the pump just stops and you're not sure why. You've gotta have back pressure, which is water weight on the delivery pipe pushing back on this pressure to keep it in here. So if you don't have a delivery pipe on here and you open this, water is going to gush out quite dramatically and the pump's gonna stop. So you have to have a delivery pipe going uphill and it has to go uphill far enough that there's enough water weight pushing back down on the pump. So with that four or five input head pressure, you're gonna have to have somewhere between 15 or 20 feet going up the hill to have enough water pushing back down. Now, if it's your initial startup of the ram pump, the delivery pipe's gonna be empty. So you may have to keep this valve open and cycle this several times, could be 10 times, could be 100 times, until you've pushed enough water up the hill to hold that back pressure. So make sure you've got a delivery pipe on the system. Number eight, the last of the most common issues that stop a ram pump is delivery pipe siphon. Let's say you have your ram pump in the creek, it goes up a hill and then back down another hill a little bit. What can happen is that siphon effect that happens whenever water is going from a higher place to a lower place can actually pull pressure out of the pump and stop it. So oftentimes I recommend that your ram pump go to the highest place where you store your tank and then let it go downhill from there. Now it is possible to go up over a mountain, down another one, and then back up another as long as you don't have that delivery pipe end at the farthest point. So keep that in mind as you're setting up your delivery pipe. If you found information in this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. I do appreciate it. If you'd like to have a ram pump of your very own, I have four different sizes available, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, and inch and a quarter, available at landahouse.com, Amazon, and on eBay. All those links are in the description down below. I'm Seth with Landahouse, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.